Good day grade 10s. Today we're going to continue with the lesson on functions and we're going to be looking at the exponential graph. The exponential graph's got a standard form which is y equals a to the x where a is a number. Now we're going to do exactly what we did before in the previous um, videos on functions. We're going to be plotting different points and then looking at what different numbers do to this graph and the shape of the graph. So let's start off with the basics, shall we? We're going to be, this time, we're going to be looking at substituting minus 2 into, well, let's put it this way, we've got three different graphs here. We've got y is equal to half to the x, y is equal to 2 to the x, and y is equal to 3 to the x. And what I want to do is I'm going to substitute in the points minus 1, uh, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 into this and then see what it does to the graph. Right, so let's start with doing that. So the first one we're doing is a half to the minus 2. So what you can do is you can actually get your calculator out. Um, let me just see where it is. And you can just pop it in. So we can pop it in. We can go bracket 1 divided by 2 close bracket and then you can go to the power to the power of negative 2 okay and that gives you 4 so on your calculators it's probably a lot easier to do it than that but that is one of the ways you can do it or I can show you another way of doing it which is very easy we can say this is y is equal to a half to the minus 2 and what that minus means is that we actually need to swap this over so that becomes 2 to the 2 which is 4 but seriously you don't need to know that it's just using your exponents what you really need to do is be able to do this on a calculator so that becomes 4 y is equal to half to the minus 1 okay is going to be the same as just swapping it over so that becomes 2 anything to the 0 you should know by now is 1 half to the 1 is just a half and a half squared becomes a quarter right so let's plot this in blue and then we'll move on to the next graph so when x is minus 2 y is 4 when x is minus 1, y is 2. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is a half. And when x is 2, y is a quarter. Sure. So you can see this graph is actually quite steep. And then it becomes shallow and it goes through 1. Okay. Let's try doing the next one which is a bit, bit easier for us because we don't have that half to worry about. So this becomes 2 to the minus 2. So that's 2 to the minus 2 which is the same as what? It is the same as 1 over 2 squared which is a quarter. So therefore that is a quarter. 2 to the minus 1 is a half. Anything to the naught is 1 okay then 2 to the 1 is just 2 and 2 squared is 4 okay so this is interesting because now we've got when x is minus 2 y is a quarter when x is minus 1 y is a half then you've got a 0 when x is 1 y is 2 and when x is 2 y is 4 and look at that that is the mirror image of my blue graph okay so what have we noticed we've noticed that if this is a fraction then the graph goes from the left down to the right in other words it has a negative gradient whereas if this is a positive number then it goes up to the right which means it's got a positive gradient and notice that they both always cross at y equals 1. Let's look at y equals 3 to the x and see what happens now. Because it's positive you know that we can assume that it's going to be going up to the 
Right. But let's see what this number, now that it's bigger than 2, what that does to our gradient. So if we've got minus 2, that becomes 3 to the minus 2. On your calculators, you'll work out that that's 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. Oh, I don't know how to plot that. 1 over 9. When x is minus 1, y is going to be a third. <gasps> Amazingly, anything to the naught is 1. And that becomes a 3. And that becomes 3 squared, which is 9. So, do you agree that when this is minus 2, it's ridiculously close? Okay. Then 3 to the x is going to be a third, which is over there. Then it goes through the 1 again. But when x is 1, y is now 3. And when x is 2, y is now 9. So do you notice that this graph has actually got steeper and steeper and steeper? So what have we noticed? We've noticed that if the number in front is a fraction, if it's a fraction, then it has a negative gradient. The graph has a negative gradient. In other words, it goes down from the left. Okay? If it has a positive whole number, whole number, positive whole number, positive whole number, positive whole number, then it has a positive gradient, right? And it goes up to the right. And you'll notice that they all cut at y equals 1. And the bigger the number in front, the bigger the number, okay, the steeper the gradient. Okay, well that's interesting. Let's see what else we can find out about the exponential graph. So now this time you will notice that we're using the same number, we're using 2 to the x. But you will notice also that we've got 2 to the x plus 1 and 2 to the x minus 1. Now, we've had experience with y is equal to ax squared plus q. We've also had experience with what y is equal to a over x plus q. And every time what has happened with these, when these are positive, what happens? The graph goes up and when these are negative, the graph goes down. So what do we think might these pluses and minuses do? Possibly they could be shifting the graph up and down, but let's have a look at it. Let's try it. So first of all, 2 to the minus 2. Again, if you pop it in your calculator, you're going to get a quarter. So that becomes a quarter. 2 to the minus 1, if you pop it in your calculator, it's going to be a half. 2 to the naught is 1. Okay, 2 to the 1 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. Right, so if I plot this again, just like last time, if x is minus 2, y is a quarter. If x is minus 1, y is a half. Then we've got 1. And then when x is 1, y is 2. And when x is 2, y is 4. So I join the dots. There we go. And that is our graph of y equals 2 to the x. Right, now let's change colors and see what happens if we add 1. So this is going to be y is equal to 2 to the x plus 1. So it's whatever this value is and then we're adding 1. So this becomes 1 and a quarter, nice and easy. 1 and a half, right? 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And 4 plus 1 is 5. But if you don't believe me, let's just substitute one of these in. So if I substitute in the value 2 into here, we've got 2 to the 2 plus 1. So 2 to the 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Ta-da! 5. Okay, now let's plot it. So when x is minus 2, y is 1 and a quarter. When x is minus 1, y is 1 and a half. When x is 0, y is 2. And when x is 2, y is... x is 1, y is 3. And when x is 2, y is 5. So you can see that this moves it up. And that's all it does. It just moves it up 
by 1. So a positive is going to be shifting the graph up by 1. Let's see what happens if we've got a minus. What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to change color again so we can see what we're doing. Um, let's make it a nice green, shall we? So this time we're taking whatever that value is and we're subtracting 1. So if we have a quarter minus 1, do you end up agree we end up with minus 3 quarters? Okay, so that is going to become minus 3 quarters. A half minus 1 is just minus a half. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, this time what have we got? We've got that 2 minus 1 is 1 and 4 minus 1 is 3. Right, so if we plot this, what do we get? At minus 2 we've got minus 3 quarters, which is there almost. At minus 1 we've got minus a half, but this time we're going to go through 0. When x is 1, y is 1, and when x is 2, y is 3. So we are again plotting this and what you should be able to see which I've not done as well as I could but you can probably see it here is that these are actually kind of parallel to each other okay and that's because this number is the same right because they're gonna have the same gradient all that's happened is we've shifted this graph up and down now I haven't spoken about asymptotes before but now I think is a good time so if you look at these graphs do you see that with this graph here with the y is equal to 2x y is equal to 2 to the x it became closer and closer and closer to the zero line to the x-axis but it never cut it ever okay similarly when you go to the y is equal to 2x plus 1 it was getting closer and closer to the y equals 1 line but never cutting it and when we got to the y is equal to 2x minus 1 it gets closer and closer to the y equals minus 1 line but never cuts it so therefore this would, could be if we could actually write it as plus 0 and these here are your asymptotes your horizontal asymptotes for your exponential your exponential graph doesn't have a vertical asymptote it only has a horizontal asymptote and then if we spoke about domain and range just to really go for it all the way through do you agree the domain is going to carry on and on and on forever from minus infinity and all the way across to positive infinity so the domain would be again your x is an element of real values that's it nothing else but the range the range would depend on your asymptote so if we're looking at this graph here which is your y is equal to the 2 to the x graph do you agree that your x-axis is your horizontal asymptote so therefore for your range your y would be an element of real values but y does not equal zero okay now let's see what else we can do with this let's see what happens if we put a minus sign in front of these numbers okay or if we put a big number in front of them so again the 2 to the x okay 2 to the minus 2 is going to be a quarter 2 to the minus 1 is a half 1 2 4 okay we've done that several times so we know this one so let's pop, pop it in so x is equal to minus 2 y is a quarter x is minus 1 y is a half 1 x is 1, y is 2, and when x is 2, y is 4. Right, so this is our standard that we've been playing with the whole time. That one there. Now let's see what happens if I put a minus in front of it. So again, I'm going to change colors, so you'll be able to recognize it on the graph. Hmm, let's pick a different color. Let's pick that one. So if it's minus 2 times by 2 to the x, what are we really doing? We're really taking this number and multiplying it by a negative. So this becomes minus a quarter, and then becomes minus a half, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 4. Right, so now if we plot this, what are we going to see? We're going to see that it becomes minus 2 minus a quarter. Okay, minus 1 minus a half. Naught goes through minus 1. 1 goes through minus 2. And 2 goes through minus 4. 
So if we look at this nice and carefully, we can see that we get what? We get a mirror image of this graph across the x-axis. So wherever we had a positive value, we've now got a negative value. So basically we've got a mirror image across the x-axis. So the y's have just swapped from a positive 2 to a minus 2, from a positive 4 to a minus 4. Okay, so that is what the negative does. Basically it flips the graph. Let's see what happens if we times our original graph by big 3. So what's going to happen? Now we are not adding, we're multiplying whatever this is by 3. So if we think about that, that becomes 3 times by a quarter, which in this case is 3 over 4, so that's 3 quarters. 3 times a half is just going to be 3 over 2, but 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 4 is 12. Let's plot this now. So when we've got minus 2, we've got now 3 quarters. 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. So minus 1 goes up to 1 and a half. When x is 0, y is 3. When x is 1, y is 6. And when x is 2, oh, we took it right off. Okay, that's 11. That's going to be 12. So we're going to see that it not only shifts it up, but it makes it much steeper. So this graph is basically multiplying whatever the original graph was. So it not only shifts the graph up, okay, by however many times we've multiplied it, but it also makes the graph a lot steeper. Okay, right, so let's have a look again. Again, this time, because we haven't been shifting it left to right or up and down, you can see that the asymptote is going to be the which line? It's going to be the axis of symmetry. I mean, sorry, the x-axis, the x-axis, there we go. Okay, so there is no vertical, and the domain and range is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be from minus infinity to positive infinity for the domain. The range will just be, okay, let's look at the blue, blue graph for y is equal to 2 to the x. What is the range? The range is going to be all the way up positive, okay, but it never touches this line. So actually, it's going to be y is bigger than zero for y is an element of real values. It never crosses that line. Okay, do you understand? Right, so let's summarize. Your basic standard form for this is y is equal to ax plus q. If a is a whole function, whole number, it has an increasing function. In other words, it's got a positive gradient. Okay, what an increasing function means is that as x goes along, y goes up. So as x goes that way, your y increases. If a is a fraction, it's got a decreasing function. In other words, it's a negative gradient. Okay. And then the, what that means is as x goes this way, what happens to your y? Your y is going down. If q is bigger than 0, the graph is shifted up. And if q is smaller than node, the graph is shifted down. Okay. Now, let's look at an example. So you've got y is equal to 2x minus 1. Draw the graph and determine the y-intercept, the domain, the range, and the asymptotes. Now, the best way to do this is to obviously plot some points. So what are we going to do? Okay, first things first, we're going to say, okay, fine. Let's let x equal 1. If x is 1, then y is going to be 2 to the 1 minus 1, which is 2 minus 1, which equals 1. Okay, so when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 0, we've got y is equal to 0 minus 1, which then becomes, my, becomes, sorry, let's try again. When x is 0, you've got y equals 2 to the 0 minus 1, which is, 2 to the 0 is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, so when x is 0, y is 0, right? Let's try minus 1. So y is equal to 2 to the minus 1 minus 1, 
2 to the minus 1 is a half, a half minus a half minus 1 is minus a half. So when x is minus 1, y is minus a half. So this graph is actually doing this. It's going up like that. Okay, happy with that? Okay, right. Um, you don't need to plot more points than that. You just remember have to plot at least three if you know the shape. If you don't know the shape, you've forgotten, you're feeling a little bit struggly, then you don't have to. We can plot some more graph. So now what is the y-intercept? Do you see the y-intercept is actually at x equals naught? So the y-intercept is actually the point naught, naught, okay? In this case because, or y equals naught as well. The domain, the domain is going to be all the way across from minus infinity to positive infinity. So the domain is just going to be x is an element of real values, no problem. Now before we get to range, let's talk about the asymptote. Because remember we said that if this graph wasn't moved anywhere, then the asymptote would be the x-axis. But this time the graph has been moved down by minus 1. So the new asymptote is going to be, there we go, is now going to be the line of y equals minus 1. Which means our range is going to be y is bigger than minus 1. Okay, that's it. The range has to be bigger than minus 1 and y is an element of real values because it cannot touch minus 1 but it can carry on to infinity. Another way that we could write range is we could go, okay fine, it goes from minus 1 to positive infinity and remember you got your parentheses because it doesn't include it. Okay, let's look at another slightly more complicated example. Do not panic. Yeah, we've got a combination. We've got f of x equals a over x plus q and we've got g of x equal to nb to the x plus t. So do you see that we've actually got two different types of graphs? This here is hyperbola and this is an exponential. And it says the horizontal asymptote of both the lines is y equals 1. The horizontal asymptotes, in other words, if I had to draw the z, it would be dush, 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 and we'd know that the horizontal asymptote is y equals 1. So that's quite nice because that means that my if I've got f of x equals a over x, okay, plus q, in this case it's going to be plus 1, and if I'm looking at my g of x, my g of x is going to be n times b to the x plus 1. Isn't that nice? Now we've been told that we've got a hyperbola and two parabolas. And they've asked us, sorry, <laughs> we've got a hyperbola and an exponential. Now what do we know? We know that the hyperbola comes in pairs. So let's go back to the red. We know that this here and this is, sorry for the terrible line, that there is the hyperbolas. So if it's in the second and fourth quadrants, we know that it's a negative graph. But what we can do is we can just substitute in some numbers. And we see that the first number we can substitute in is 2 naught into this equation. Now remember that f of x stands for y, so this can be rewritten as y is equal to a over x plus 1, where if we substitute in this point, we know that that point is going to be naught is equal to a over 2 plus 1 and now we just solve for our a. So we take it across, we get minus 1 is equal to a over 2 and to get rid of the 2 what do we do? Times both sides by 2, that cancels with that and you've got a is equal to negative 2. So therefore the equation for your hyperbola is f of x equals 2 over x plus 1. Isn't that nice? Now let's play with this equation. Okay, right. 
Now, it looks a little bit scary, but do you see that it goes through 0, 0? So that makes life a little bit easier. And we've got this point here, which is 1 minus 1. Okay, so let's have a look at this. And let me change my pen to green. So if we substitute in the point 0, 0, what are we going to get? Remember, g of x is the same as y. So it's going to be 0 equals n times b to the 0 plus 1. So what does that mean? That means that the b goes away. It becomes 1 because anything to the 0 is 1. So you've got 0 equals n times by 1 plus 1. I can take that plus 1 to the other side, so it becomes minus 1 equals n. So now we know that our n is well, minus 1. Awesome. Now all we have to do is work out our b. The way we can work out our b is we can substitute in our second point of 1 minus 1 because now we've got y is equal to minus 1 times by b to the x plus 1. So if we substitute in the points 1 minus 1 where x is 1 and y is minus 1, we've got minus 1 is equal to minus 1 times b to the 1 plus 1. So if we take that across, it becomes minus 2 is equal to minus 1 times b to the 1. And I'm being very pedantic by times in the, putting the minus 1 every time. You don't have to. I just want you to realize that it's separate from the minus b, which means we can divide both sides by that. And we get 2 is equal to b. Therefore, we've got, oopsie, g of x is equal to minus 1 times by minus 2 to the x plus 1. Right, so that was quite a tricky question, I must admit. So what did we learn from this? We learned that we need to remember that this year, the pluses at the ends are the ones that shift our graphs, okay? So we look for the horizontal asymptotes. And then we need to just be looking at substituting in the points in. So did, then the last thing that we need to do, because what did they ask? They didn't ask us to find the equations. They actually asked us to find the values of A, B, N, Q, and T. And to make it easy for the teacher's marking, you should always list it. So therefore, we write A is minus 2, B is 2, n is minus 1, q is plus 1, and t is plus 1. Isn't that awesome? Right, now, grade 10s, you guys need to go and practice, practice, practice. Make sure you know how the different things affect the exponential graph, and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.